Hi everyone! I hope you're all having a great week! So if all goes according to plan, by now we should be in Maine, living in the beautiful town of Brewer. Our house closings were to happen on September 30th, and even though we're now well into October, I'm probably still posting videos that I filmed while I was living in Vermont. And the reason I did this, or that the reason I'm doing this, is because I'm sure if I know anything about moves and how long it takes to get unpacked, there's a good chance I'm not currently set up in my new studio yet. So for now, I'm posting videos that I happily created while I was living in Vermont. And um, soon, hopefully, my studio will be completely set up and I'll be able to start showing you my studio and filming in this new studio of mine. It's been quite a hustle to get all of my video footage shot ahead of time, especially since I was filming videos for the weeks coming up ahead, and so I've had to, to film a lot of videos all at once and then do my video editing. And I'm really thankful that I have the flexibility to be able to film a video and do my paintings and then work on the video editing part of the process. It's been a very busy and productive time and I won't lie it's also been pretty stressful but I've managed to work through that stress by continuing to paint and also make time for myself to get outside and do things that I enjoy and I know sometimes when we get really busy it's hard to focus on doing anything that we feel might seem frivolous to other people but these things are extremely important and they may even be more important when we are going through a stressful time or a stressful period in our lives because they help to restore balance and it's good to take care of ourselves. It's important to take care of ourselves because if we don't take care of ourselves, it makes it a whole lot harder to get through those stressful moments. As usual, all of my products are listed in the video description below, but if you ever have any questions about the products I'm using or the techniques that I'm using, please don't hesitate to ask because I always love connecting with you. Let's get back to my painting process. So I started off my painting this week by creating just a few lines with my pencil just as little guides for where I was going to place my paint. And then I started to apply my paint. And I'm creating again another geologic abstract, similar to one I've created in the past, but not exactly the same, and using some slightly different colors and slightly different techniques. But I really loved the results on that painting. And so when I like something, I often try to work on creating it again in a different way to see what else I can do. And this helps me to sometimes also create a series of paintings that are very cohesive. I usually paint in a very intuitive way and I love to work using a lot of water and sometimes this creates textures and I know that um, some artists will say that we have to be careful about how much water we use because it can create textures that or maybe undesirable for some, but for me they're not undesirable and I love to play with water in this way. It's um, kind of like my partner in crime if you will. It's an element in my paintings that can help create textures that will then help guide me in my creative process because the different textures and marks that get created by the water and by my paintbrush as I'm moving the paint along the paper, all of these little things will help guide me and make decisions about what I want to do next. After I added the light red, I went in and added some quinacridone deep gold. And the reason I did this is because it, the paint was still wet, the, that light red was still wet, and I think the colors play very well together to create earthy tones. And then to soften that hard line that was created when I first added the light red, 
I wet my brush with just some clear water and I go over the line and um, blend it a little bit into the other colors that are more at the center of my painting. To create balance in my painting, I'll also use some of that quinacridone deep gold and move it up into the neutral tint that I put at the top of my painting. And again, that's going to help to create an earthy look in these sections of the painting. As watercolors tend to dry lighter than they are when they're first applied, I always like to go back in and add some more intense color to my painting just for some added value contrast and um, to add more interest and dimension to the painting. So I'm going in now with that neutral tint and in order to add more pigment, I'm simply just putting less water in my paint when I'm adding it to the paper. While my neutral tint is still wet, I'm going to add some of that quinacridone deep gold to it. And it's going to turn that color into more of um, a slight brown, if you will. But again, I'm going for earthy colors here, so I don't mind doing that. And I actually feel that it looks quite nice. But I am going to add a little bit more of that intense color into it, because I don't want to completely lose the vibrancy of that quinacridone deep gold. Water really is one of our strongest allies when we're working with watercolors. And so I'll often go in with just clear water to help to move some of the paint that's already on the paper and to create different textures and lines. And um, I love how when the clear water touches any part of the painting that's still wet, it helps to move some of that color up into the other parts of the painting. And that helps to, again, create balance and keep things looking um, uniform and cohesive. I guess cohesive is definitely a much better word to use in this instance because it's not really creating uniformity. There's not a whole lot of uniformity going on here. Um, it's pretty balanced and there's a lot of um, the colors are blending into each other and it is creating that um, cohesiveness but uniformity I guess is something that you would associate with something that's more repetitive in patterns and that has um, I don't know how to describe it but hopefully you know what I mean like it's 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 just very similar everywhere you look and that's not really what's going on in this painting but um, cohesiveness I think is definitely happening because I'm using the colors that are at the top also at the bottom and using some of them um, making sure that they sort of blend into one another and that they balance each other and that they don't I can't say I guess that they match but that there is there's something complementary happening in the painting, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I hope that all made sense. <laughs> You may have noticed that certain colors are repellent to other colors, it seems, and that nickel azel yellow that I love so much has a tendency to sort of, when you put it on other paint, when the paper is still wet, it sort of pushes the other colors away, and it creates these really neat effects that I really enjoy. So I love working with that color for a number of reasons, but that's one of them that I definitely enjoy. Once I was happy with my background, I let my background completely dry and then I brought out my simple HB pencil and I started to draw in some rough shapes of some rocks in the middle section of my painting. I do this often, not all the time, but often when I want to create something 
but not commit to it. So in drawing these lines with pencil, if I'm not happy with any of those lines, I can simply go in and erase them and it won't be a problem. Whereas if I committed to just doing it right away with my ink, then I would be basically, like I said, committing to having those lines in the artwork, whether or not I actually like them. So this gives me a chance to sort of preview what is coming and to see if I want to continue going with this process. I like the look of these lines and so I'm ready to commit to going with ink and I've pulled out my fountain pen to start working on creating what will look like little rocks and uh, maybe boulders in my geologic, geologic abstract. In the last geologic abstract I created I made rocks and boulders that had a little bit more of a rounded appearance and I'm going to try to do something different in this one and where my rocks and my boulders will be a little bit more jagged. So I don't know how this will go or how it will turn out in the end but I wanted to do it a little bit differently to see how it would look and so this is what I'm trying to do here. Now I'm going to start working with my fine tip black pen to start adding some different details, this time some vertical lines, just to create the abstract look of fissures in the rocks. This also adds a light element of shading in the painting and it creates some added interest when you get closer to it. I also use this technique to go into some of the different shapes and textures that were created in the background and I use the same technique of creating those vertical lines just to again create some uh, cohesion in my painting and to again make some abstract looking fissures. I often like to add stippling in my paintings and I wanted to do a little bit of that in here as well but I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time. And so in these areas where I've created those fine lines with my fine tip black pen, I'm also going to go in and add a little bit of stippling uh, or dotting, if you will, in those little areas. And I'm doing this just again to create some texture and the look of uh, maybe granulated rock or something like that. When I'm feeling called to add some very dark elements in my painting, I usually feel like the best way for me to do that is to pull out my India ink. 
And so I did that. I put a little bit of that India ink in my little lid here that I'm using sort of as a palette. And I'm using my dotting tool to create a little bit more texture and some detailed elements around the areas where the rock, the different colored rocks uh, connect. Of course, since I'm working on a geologic abstract, I have to add some gold. Hey, who am I kidding? I would have added gold anyway. I just love that color so much. So here it is, that beautiful star gold that I love so much. And I'm gonna add it just a little bit. I'm not gonna go crazy with it like I sometimes can, because <laughs> I love it just so much. Um, yeah, I'm going to add it a little bit on the top, a little bit on the bottom. I'll add a few little um, like taps of it, like just to sprinkle some little splatters over the bottom portion of the painting and also on the top. And then I'll add a little bit of gold in that off-white cream colored section, if you will, just to add, um, to, just to create some balance. Right, so I think that was just about enough gold, so I'm now ready for my big reveal. I really love how the colors in this painting play together. They give that earthy feel to the painting, and at the same time they contrast each other very well. Let's move in just a little bit closer. Making time to have fun and create little paintings like this one sure is a great way to relieve some stress. And I hope I can inspire you to find some moments or create moments for yourself where you can also do something similar. Thank you for making the time to watch my videos, for subscribing, and for connecting with me via your comments. It's always such a pleasure to hear from you, and I enjoy that part of my process so much. So thanks again. I hope you have a wonderful week, and don't forget, happy creating!